factually inaccurate, morally correct. This is Babylon B Radio. Our top story. In a speech last night, Joe Biden condemned fascism and extremism while also debuting a delightful little mustachioed look. Reporters oohed and awed over his fashionable new facial hair look as the president ranted about people he disagrees with needing to be condemned as terrorists in order to fight fascism. Entertainment Tonight had a reporter on the red carpet. It's a good look for him. I know they say don't wear that kind of mustache before Labor Day, but I really think he pulls that off. It's kind of a classic look. Vaguely European. Perhaps 1930s, 40s Germanic maybe. Really inspired. The one who owns the youth gains the future, shouted Biden, pounding on his towering lectern as he stood before giant banners lit up in blood red. To conquer a nation, you must first disarm its citizens, he screamed while holding his arm at a 45-degree angle to the sky. Finally, he concluded his speech by defending democracy and condemning fascism with a powerful line. We must employ the final solution to exterminate those vermin who would oppose our glorious third republic. Foothill Unified School District has expelled a student after she hatefully held up a mirror to her teacher, Mix Jen Littleton, reflecting Littleton's deranged rant on gender identity, pronouns, and sex changes. By merely holding up a mirror to Mix Littleton's insane views, Claire Whitman was targeting her for harassment and endangering her life, said the district superintendent. Can you imagine if someone saw that? Little monster needs to be stopped. The kid, I mean. According to sources, Littleton saw herself giving an absolutely insane speech where she told the class of second graders that they might be the wrong gender and that they should consider mutilating their bodies to be happier in life. She was horrified as she saw herself shouting about how much she hated Trump, America, and cisgendered people. And she was especially shocked when she saw herself leading the class in a pledge of allegiance to the pride flag. I saw the insanity that I was spouting, and I realized that this student amplifying my views was the real hateful bigot. How dare this little girl reflect my own maniacal babblings back to me. The student has been banned from Twitter, Facebook, Fortnite, and popular knitting site Ravelry. NASA officials were forced to postpone the eagerly anticipated Artemis launch after discovering a female astronaut had failed to refuel the rocket following its last mission. I could have sworn I made sure it was full. Astronaut Katie Schmidt said to reporters at the Kennedy Space Center. And it isn't like that big of a deal, right? I mean, it's totally different from the last time I spilled my latte on the controls and caused like a million dollars in damage. NASA engineers are working to nail down a new date for the launch of the moon orbiting Artemis mission using the extra time provided by the delay to give their female astronaut additional training. It's an ongoing struggle. We're still not sure how she managed to actually back the simulator into the wall when she was putting on her makeup. I mean, it's stationary. How's that even possible? Anyway, diversity, right? Critically acclaimed, larger-than-life star Lizzo recently accepted her music video award at MTV's VMAs. While doing so, the artist took time to speak out about the systemic oppression of having to walk all the way down to the stage to accept an award she can't even eat. The artist went on to encourage young girls everywhere to instead be healthy at any weight and to, quote, treat yourself to that hot fudge cake breakfast you deserve and to reject hateful, fatphobic words like diabetes, heart disease, and heart failure. A spokesman for the award show said in a statement, quote, we take accusations of oppression very seriously around here. That's why next year we will be providing all attendees with their own personal hover-round mobility scooter, as well as replacing all our awards with McDonald's McFlurries. MTV later announced that as part of their promise to do better and prevent oppression, the 2022 VMAs would be held at a local Golden Corral. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee Ozzy Osbourne says he is sick and tired of Prego Kong Marcelo and plans to exchange his fast-paced L.A. lifestyle for the peaceful green pastures of Grisha Hugel Cruzy Beetle Boop Like him gone to regional bees said a disappointed Osbourne as he slowly shook his head Oh, I'm a, I'm a render blonde shizzle mango moo An official statement by the Osbourne family attorney has clarified that Ozzy is leaving California due to exorbitant tax rates However, the attorney has thus far been unable to discern the family's final destination. I looked up Grizza Hergel, and it does not exist. According to the fan website OzzyFozzy.com, the former Black Sabbath vocalist is likely planning to live full-time at Welder's House, an estate he already owns in Buckinghamshire, England. Ozzy's current lifestyle of laying around all day and mumbling to himself would also make him a welcome fit in the English countryside, say experts. Buckinghamshire also made the top 10 list of great places to die. <gasps> But not to worry, Black Sabbath fans, Osborne has said his family will return if I was the Astro. A popular YouTuber died suddenly this week while filming an unboxing video of the famed Ark of the Covenant. 
The sacred Jewish artifact, which had recently been discovered by archaeologists in a cave outside Jerusalem, had been turned over to the Israel Antiquities Authority, who recruited a Gen Z influencer to document the find. Okay, fam. Let's get this baby open. Said YouTuber Ashdodcat49 before her face was vaporized during the live stream. The famous last words by the influencer have since been turned into a meme by Jews around the world. Experts have analyzed the video, noting that Ashdodcat49 actually dies as soon as her hand touches the ark, but then the momentum from her body pushes the lid off and the screen turns to static. The video lasts 3 minutes and 49 seconds and features the sound of wailing and gnashing of teeth as it sounds like the soul of the woman is ripped out of her body and thrust into the eternal torment shortly after her brains appear to explode out of her eye sockets. Said one YouTube commenter, quote, This really affirms my faith, but yikes. Local man Frank Quincy is 33 years old, but still pictures every character in the Bible as a talking vegetable. Sources close to the man confirmed this week. Every time I read the account of Daniel in the lion's den, I just can't help picturing him as a low polygon anthropomorphic cucumber. And over here, at 1 Samuel, I, I can't help but envision David as a tiny little asparagus fighting a big old pickle. And he's got boxing gloves for some reason? Well, a new study finds Quincy is not alone. According to research presented by the Sitbench Research Institute, up to 92% of adults associate historical figures in the Bible with various vegetables. Head researcher Terry Pendleton. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. They think the defenders of Jericho were tiny little peas with French accents. They also mistakenly believe they poured purple slushies on the Israelites, who were, of course, also vegetables. And almost 100% of U.S. adults picture Nebuchadnezzar's idolatrous statue as a big chocolate bunny. Very strange. It's unclear where this misconception came from, but researchers say they're 95% confident that the people in the Bible were not actually tomatoes, cucumbers, or any kind of blueberry. Now you're up to date on the only news that matters. Find more fake news you can trust at BabylonBee.com. Until next time, this is Austin Robertson, the voice of the Babylon Bee. So long.